Hello, I'm Justine Green with the BBC News. The head of the Russian paramilitary force Wagner has accused the regular Russian army of fleeing from positions near the Ukrainian town of Bakhmut. Yevgeny Prigozhin disputed the Russian defence minister's description of its troop movements as a regrouping and accused the ministry of lying. We've got about 20 buildings left and then Bakhmut will be fully taken. Around 20 multi-storey buildings, not counting buildings in the private sector. The taking of Bakhmut gives the Russian Federation nothing because the flanks are crumbling and the front is failing. Russian-appointed officials say missiles fired by Ukrainian forces have injured six children in the occupied city of Luhansk in eastern Ukraine. They say tactical missiles hit a packaging plant and a factory. Local officials say a Russian parliamentarian was also injured. There's been no independent confirmation of the claims. But there's speculation that if the strikes were carried out by Ukrainian forces, Kyiv could have used a new longer-range missile. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has been welcomed by cheering supporters as he arrived back in his home city of Lahore after judges granted him protective bail. The opposition leader's dramatic arrest and brief detention over corruption allegations sparked outrage among his supporters. And Barisan Atarajan reports. What Pakistan witnessed this week was extraordinary. The government and the country's powerful army have once again failed in their attempts to keep Imran Khan, who is facing dozens of cases, in prison. Mr Khan and the military have long been at loggerheads. Some fear that the army that has ruled for nearly half the country's 75-year history might intervene again following the unrest. But a military spokesman said the army supported the democratic process and dismissed reports of dissent in the ranks following recent events. Mexico's foreign minister says his country will only accept a maximum of 1,000 deportees a day from the United States. The decision follows the ending of COVID-related rules that allowed U.S. border agents to immediately eject undocumented migrants. Thousands of people have blocked a major road in the Serbian capital, Belgrade. It was part of a demonstration against two mass shootings last week. Guy Delaunay reports. The authorities had warned the protesters against blocking roads to make their point, but they did it anyway, bringing Friday rush hour traffic to a standstill. They marched under the banner Serbia Against Violence and called on the authorities to tackle the people and organisations they view as culpable for last week's mass shootings. They want two government ministers to quit and two television stations to lose their licences. Protest organisers say the media outlets encourage a culture of violence through irresponsible programmes and disinformation. BBC News. The candidates in Turkey's pivotal presidential election have been appealing to voters in the final hours before Sunday's vote. Stakes are high, with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan facing the real prospect of losing power after 20 years. He told his Conservative supporters, without evidence, that they might face reprisals if his secular challenger, Kemal Kilic Daralu, were to win. Mr Kilic Daralu appeared at his rally in Ankara in a bulletproof vest because of security concerns. Troops from Armenia and Azerbaijan have clashed for a second day on their border. One soldier from each side was killed in an exchange of fire involving mortars and drones. The two countries' leaders are due to meet in Brussels on Sunday. Prosecutors in Peru have requested a 35-year prison sentence for the former president, Pedro Pablo Kaczynski, who's been accused of receiving bribes from a Brazilian construction company. Mr Kaczynski has been under house arrest since 2019. He denies the corruption and money laundering charges. The Foreign Minister of Papua New Guinea has stepped down in the face of public anger over the cost of a state-funded delegation to the coronation of King Charles III. Justin Kachenko also made disparaging comments about his critics. Katwina reports. The decision to send a delegation of 30 people to the ceremony in London last week had already proved controversial in the Pacific Island nation, where more than 40% of people live in poverty. Anger was exacerbated by scenes of first-class travel and a luxury shopping spree posted online by Mr Kachenko's daughter, who accompanied him on the trip. When Mr Kachenko, an Australian-born white man, denounced those criticising his daughter as primitive animals, it proved the final straw, sparking large protests outside Parliament House in Port Moresby on Friday. Mr Kachenko said he was resigning to clear the air ahead of a state visit next week by President Biden. BBC News.